This is the Literary Licensed Podcast with your hosts, Vicky Ray, John Wilson, and Keith Shorgo. Discussing book to screen and everything in between. Coming at you from the UK and USA. They keep it real. Hello, welcome to the Literary License Podcast, and today we're going to be discussing our April 2019 Choices on Shudder, which is available at www.shudder.com. And before we get started, let's see who's with us today. There's my one and trusty companion, Vicky Ray. Say hello, Vicky. Hello. And of course, myself. So, before we get started, let's see what we've been up to since last time we've spoken. So, Vicky, what have you been up to? Well, I've been catching up on Dark Shadows, and in my insomniatic moments, I've been watching really shitty movies that have four stars, like The Snarling. <laughs> I watched that last night. I believe it was on Amazon Prime, and it was kind of like a spoofy thing of uh, American Werewolf in London and kind of like a zombie apocalypse kind of weird stuff with a production company. I can't explain it, but I was going to fall asleep again, and I said, no, I'm going to finish it, so I got, I turned it back on and just could not stop. It was a train wreck but other than that um i just doing the same stuff i've been doing taking care of the kid and um doing racing got a belt race series this weekend that keeps me really busy and just catching up on all the stuff for you good people and myself i started watching this series that's based on this fantastic movie if you're into vampires and you like piss takes there's this um new zealand or i think it's the other new zealand or australian um tv uh, well Australian or New Zealand right. film. There we go. I'll spit it out one of these days. It's called We oh, Live in the Shadows. And it's about a group of vampires who house share together and they don't they all hate each other. And it's quite funny. So now they made it. What a is it called again? We live in the shadows. It's fantastic. It's, it is available on Amazon Prime, um, part of the Amazon Prime package. It used to be on Netflix for the longest time. It might still be on Netflix in um, some territories, depending on where you're listening to this podcast from. But hunt this out. But they now made a TV series, and I've seen like four episodes of it, and it's hilariously funny. For instance, you got um, this old 1600 vampire living in this house with these like Victorian Gothic vampires. <laughs> but they also have this guy who's like from the 20th century, and he is a psychic vampire. And what he does is he sucks out the energy by being really boring to people. <laughs> <laughs> and then Sounds there's this, like my ex. <laughs> <laughs> and, then there's, and then there's this emotional vampire who's, you know, those people who like go around and like everything's a sob story and yes. they, they just suck your energy. She's an emotional, va <laughs> She's an emotional yes. vampire. So, but it's really, <laughs> really funny. And it's, it's kind of like really off kilter 
even though it's an American series, uh, it is put on by FX, so you might be able to find it on the FX channel. I've not heard of this one, and I usually watch every vampire or whatever I get my hands on, so yeah, I'll definitely watch it. Oh, it's hilarious, but there, there's kind of the English flavor of um, uh, comedy that goes to that wine store. Which I like because I love English humor, British yeah. humor, Monty Python, anything like that. But I highly recommend it. I mean, I watched it. I thought, oh, oh my God, they made a series to start watching it. And I watched all four of them and I was cacking myself laughing. And it was like oh, two, okay. three o'clock in the morning where Debs, who's staying with us at the moment, she goes back on right. Thursday, had to come down. She goes, what the hell are you laughing at? <laughs> so I was laughing <laughs> loudly. So so that's I've been, so I've been watching that. Um, Life in Pieces has come back. So I started watching that. Game of Thrones is awesome. Yep, firing. Game of Thrones, definitely. And I watched this new show on Netflix called Bonded about this dominatrix and her gay friend which is quite funny each episode is about 15-20 minutes long and I kind of dipped into it and finished it all within a couple hours so that was good so but besides that not a lot I got um, a couple friends here from the US Shannon and Chelsea um, they are basically stalking the group Suede as they're following them around from town to town <laughs> Wetting themselves every time he, um, the lead singer sweats on them. So, yeah, they're very excited. Who's that? <laughs> My friend Shannon and her friend Chelsea. Shannon I've known for, God, I've known Shannon for over 30 years. I've known her in Tulsa when I used to live in Tulsa. Right. So it's good Who are they her. stalking? Uh, the group Suede. They were a group in the 90s. To be honest, I wasn't even aware they were still going until they said they're I wasn't aware of it either. That's why I was like, I'm really? Yeah. Well, everybody's trying to make a comeback. The 80s have made these old rock stars. Some of them still sound pretty good, like Deep well, Purple and Def Leppard. And I mean, we went to go see Black Sabbath on their farewell tour, but Ozzy keeps getting... I was going to go see Ozzy, but he canceled his tour, I guess, the last time. What's the last thing he did? He tripped over something while he was going back to bed after taking a pee. Well, I'm surprised that guy can even talk. Well, he can barely he talk. He can't. He can't <laughs> talk, but he can sing still. He's like the perfect anti-drug ch poster child. <laughs> like, this is what drugs does well, to Well, you know what? If you want to watch something funny where they interject Ozzy, watch The Dirt on Netflix. It's about mm. Motley Crue. It's excellent. The book was better, of course, but mm. The Dirt was va was fantastic movie. I, I watched it twice. I loved it. Mm. But I love Motley Crue, so... Then I watched this disturbing horror film on. I'll, I'll let you know next time we um, next time we get on the podcast because I can't remember. I'm, I'm tripping up over the name, but it kind of freaked me out. But it was really good, so I'll, I'll let you know what that is. If it freaked time. you out, it had to be good. Yeah, it was really I, good. I watched this last night. Was it Stay Alive? It was about gamers. Okay. Did you say you have to watch it? It was actually I, I, I watched it till three in the morning. I didn't think I was going to finish it, but it's about these gamers with I'm going to give them away. And, and Elizabeth Bathory is involved somehow. Uh -huh. And she comes back and she's just she wants blood, you know, Elizabeth Bathory stories. But it, it's a really good movie. If you're a gamer, you're probably really going to enjoy it and, and relate. I'll check that out because I mean, if you're going to go You'll like it. She, she had to bathe in virgins' blood, and what way, you know, exactly. what better way to look for virgins is gamers. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, you know, there's a lot of, it's a slasher flick, and it, but I mean, the thing, the thing of it was, was like the gaming character interjected itself into our reality, mm. and it was some fucked up shit. So, I mean, I'm not a gamer, but I watched it. I couldn't stop watching it. It was excellent. It was I a really good movie. And let's see, anything else? No, that's about it, really. But I will come back next week um, when we do our next podcast, which will be on the Tom Tyron novel, The Other, and based on the Robert Mulligan film of the same name. Right. So I guess before I we go off into a tangent, it has nothing to do with our podcast. Like we always do. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to start talking about our April 2019 choices for Shudder. So, Vicki, what's your first choice? Well, it's it. It's an all-time classic, as far as I'm concerned. It has one of my favorite monsters. It was Cloverfield. Mm -hmm. It's a 2008 American. They call it a found footage monster film. It was directed by Matt Reeves and written by Drew Goddard. And the stars are Michael Stahl, and I can't pronounce that name. David Odette Yesman, T.J. Miller, Jessica Lucas, Lizzie Kaplan, and Mike Vogel. It follows a. It's a plot about six. Actually, I call them kids, but they're young New York City residents that are fleeing from this massive monster and, and all these little various creatures that are like parasites on the big monster. Mm -hmm. 
that attack the city while they're doing some kind of farewell party. And the reason I liked it was because it was kind of, they, it was like filmed sort of like, what's that movie, Blair Witch kind of sort of, yeah. but with actually cool footage, you know? And you wanted to see what this monster looked like. And I mean, Godzilla was kind of scary, but this monster was really well done. I, I just love Cloverfield. It's the only real Cloverfield out of the series I really love. And it's just, it's like you're sitting there going, oh my God, oh my God, you know, he's going to get that guy with the camera. He's laying there like a dumbass, still filming this 400 foot monster coming near him. And of course he's going to die. But I mean, it's just one of the best monster movies I've seen. I just absolutely love Cloverfield. I do. I do like that film. I did like um, 10 Cloverfield Lane. I like Cloverfield I haven't better. seen that one yet. Oh, it's yes, like, I did. Was that with John Goodman? Yeah, John Goodman. That one was really claustrophobic. We should have included that one in our claustrophobic month. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that would have fitted <laughs> quite well with this, this month's theme. Yeah, that was really good. Um, but I think, yeah, the ending didn't feel like it actually fit in, but I can understand the ending for it because it ties in this film with that film. So, But I have said to say Cloverfield Paradox that was on Netflix in 2018. Right. What a fucking! I I'll never get my hour and a half back. I'm sorry. I want I, I it back. I was told that and I didn't even bother. No, sorry. It's but, just, it but was, the, that was a waste of time. I'm sorry. But the, this but, Cloverfield, like the cinematography, was really, really good for a, a like a low budget film. I thought so, and I thought the monster was totally believable. That's why I loved it so much. And considering it's 2008, even the um, CGI was very well done for it. Right. Right. I, I mean, I enjoyed it, this film. I mean, that, like the yeah, it was just great. I mean, they did a good job of it, and the characters where you actually liked them, you kind of felt sorry for them, and you knew they were fucked like through the whole movie, basically. Yeah. And you know, those last two people thought they were going to get away, and you know, it just shit happens. The only but, nigg- the only niggling problem with it is that. I'm, if your life's in danger, I'm not sure I would keep holding on to the camera. That's no, just... I would have been running. <laughs> I course, don't understand. Of course, that. if they dropped the camera, you wouldn't have a movie. So you kind of need both. That's right. But they did drop the camera. And then you saw that, you know. And one runs scene. back and picks it up. <laughs> <laughs> but then you had this thing. They were like, they were like little monsters that were like fleas or yeah. whatever that lived on the monster. And they were just even worse than the monster because they were just nasty little fuckers. So, I mean, I just, I don't know. Every time it's on, I see it's on, uh, it was it Netflix or Amazon. I'll probably watch it again just because I enjoy it that much. It's just one of those weird movies I like, so. Amazon. Oops, wrong Amazon. Although we both contain an array of diversity, the rainforest with all of its animals and us with all of our products, come check us over today and find all the products you need quickly and efficiently. And buy it with one click. And now you can even use us to donate to your favorite charities using Amazon Smile. Amazon Smile is worth your while. Come check us out today. My name is Robert Hawkins. And approximately seven hours ago, uh, something attacked the city. Um, you found this. If you're watching this, then you know more about it than I do. Hello? Beth? Beth, where are you? Okay, we cannot go into the middle of the city. We gotta get out of here. There's nothing you can do for now. Do you know what that thing is? Whatever it is, it's winning. No, you know, how it all went down.
What about you? My first choice is Castle Freak. It's a 1995 American horror film that was directed by Stuart Gordon. Stuart Gordon, you probably know from films like Reanimator and the, of that ilk. And basically, it's, ba it's loosely based on the short story by H.P. Lovecraft called The Outsider. It was um, direct to video on the 14th of November, 1995. And the film contains elements of slasher and slasher films. But it does ink, uh, well, does star like one of my favorite all time horror actors is Jeffrey Coombs. Yeah. And uh, Barbara Crampton's in it as well. And basically, it's about this um, um, John Riley, you know, inherits his 12th century castle in Italy. And he moves there with his wife and daughter after killing their five-year-old son in a driving accident, which cost the sight of his daughter. And there's this monster thing with a penis running around. <laughs> oh my women. God. Uh, but, How did uh, I not watch this before? <laughs> but it, it, but I quite. I mean, I, there's something about it that I do like, and this is part. You can watch it on either Shutter as a film on its own. But it's also part of the um, Billy Bob Briggs's drive-in theater right. show that's on Shutter as well. So a it's lot quite... of people need to watch because it's great. Yeah, it's it, is. it is. Well, Barbara yeah. Crampton's on this episode with him talking about this film, and she's. I haven't seen this one. She's she's a fantastic well. She is, she is a horror goddess of all times. But it, you know, it. I mean, it was put out by Full Moon Enterprises, and for a low. You know, for the low budget that it has, it really delivers, and it's a really good. It's, it's a bit kitschy, but it's a bit fun, and yeah. So it's Castle Freak, the 1994 American <laughs> horror film, or Castle Freak, Castle Freak, Castle so, Freak, Castle Freak. <laughs> so, okay, Bradley, tell the class about your holidays. Yeah, it was really good. My dad built us a new kitchen. It's got wooden bench tops and some stupid and soft closing drawers. There was a dishwasher that was a real and even a breakfast bar. Mum thought Dad was a massive. Get a kitchen installed without teaching your kids new words. Visit ikea.com.au. We can plan, deliver, and install the whole thing for you. Stuart Gordon, the director of Fortress, The Pit and the Pendulum, and Reanimator, takes you into the dungeons of Castle Dorsino. Now an American family. Welcome to Castle Riley, lady. Will inherit a legacy of evil. They say the castle is haunted. And a master of modern horror. <laughs> will unleash his most terrifying creation. Stuart Gordon's Castle Free. <laughs> you to search the castle. Giorgio Dorsino, he was never buried. She kept him alive. He's here somewhere in the castle. There is a madman in there, but my family is in danger. Reanimators Jeffrey Combs and Barbara Crampton in Stuart Gordon's Castle Freak. What about your second choice? Well, this one's just like one of those movies you either got to love to hate it or hate to love it. <laughs> Hansel and Gretel get baked. I just could not stop it. It was, it was just like a train wreck. 
<laughs> and it was also known as Black Forest, Hansel and Gretel and the 420 Wit. It's a horror comedy film from uh, Mark Morgan, who also was the producer of The Twilight Saga. Mm -hmm. And this is directed by uh, Dwayne Journey. It's got Michael Welch, Molly Quinn, and Laura Flynn Boyle as the actors. And it was released in theaters and on VOD on February of 2013. And uh, it, it, this movie, <laughs> I don't even know how to explain this movie. You just got to watch it. <laughs> it, it, it. It's about a witch. Okay, we know the Hansel and Gretel story. Yeah. But the witch, well, she's not going to put them in the oven. It's really graphic and gory, which is why I like it. But the witch is really evil, and it entices people with her pot because she's a drug dealer. <laughs> and, um, you know, she just, they, they bake cookies, and, and they, they, they buy them off this old lady. And these kids, you know, as kids will do, they want to find the best pot they can. You know, and Agnes... Uh, is a witch and she's she drugs and awakens people on her table and she's gutting them and like you know it's sort of like William Wallace getting gutted on Braveheart she's pulling out parts and whatnot <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's so intriguing about the movie but I mean it, it's so bad it's that good and mm. it's just one of those movies you have to watch the plot there really is no plot because I can't really explain it you have to watch it and figure it out for yourself <laughs> <laughs> but if you got like an hour and a half to 90, whatever, 90 minutes of your life to waste and you have nothing better to do and you like watching, you know, uh, pot selling witches that are trying to put people in ovens and eat them, this is the one you need to watch. Well, I haven't seen this one. I haven't heard of it, but I am going to seek this one out. You have to watch it. It's a train wreck. It's a total train wreck. But I mean, I, I watched it and, and you know, I, I just couldn't stop watching it because first she appears as a little old lady and then she's this gorgeous, <clears throat> beautiful witch. But she entices all these people like the Pied Piper because she's selling pot throughout the neighborhood. Everybody wants to go to her house and buy pot. And she traps people that way. And then she just cuts them up on a table. <laughs> it's well, just, that's it's one just way a to weird sell. fucking movie. It's <laughs> one way to sell the munchies. <laughs> <laughs> well, the next my be next pick was better. So, oh. hello. What's your favorite scary movie? Um, I have a bunch of favorite movies. I watch them all on Shutter.com for only four ninety nine a month. That's a scary low price. But if I had to pick a favorite, it'd probably be Scream. Oh. Yeah, it's the only streaming service that lets me watch hundreds of horror movies on demand. Uh, I'll be right back. Hello? Hello? Hello, are you gonna subscribe? Hello? Go to Shutter.com to subscribe. If you dare. Hansel, we're off to spend the weekend with the Stiltskins. Keep an eye on your sister. Oh. Awesome, huh? Yeah, it's awesome. What are you smoking? Ah, oh, it's called Black Forest. Mm, what, like the cake? Cake. Cake. Stoners. Where'd she get it? Some little old lady in Pasadena is growing it in her basement. How did you get into the growing business? I love to get high. <laughs> Don't touch my gingerbread house. He's not home and he hasn't answered any of my calls or texts. You wanted Agnes's address. This is better. Can you take me to Pasadena? What's in Pasadena? A little old lady. How do you get these plants to grow so big? Magic. We are so screwed. Not a good idea. She's got to be some kind of witch. Wait till the cops see this. They just give me all my loose back. You smell delicious.
Well, my next pick is Society. It's a 1989 American body horror film directed by Brian Yanza and starring Billy Warlock, Devin Vasquez, Evan Richards, and Ben Meyerson. Brian Yanza is the, he did the, spe the special effects um, and the um, cinematography for Reanimator series. And this is his first direct, um, directorial debut. Um, the, the plot follows a Beverly Hills teenager who finds his wealthy parents a part of a gruesome cult of social elite. And, and basically how the rich suck off the poor, literally. <laughs> so Okay. It's a really interesting film. Um, the film was, you know, it was completed in 1989, but wasn't released in 1992 because it did have some problems with the censors. But the... Re the special effects are done by Screaming Mad George, um, and they're fantastic. It is very, there's body parts all like sliming into each other and becoming <laughs> one body. And it's oh, God, sexual. it's like the blob of zombies. Oh, no, but these are like body parts and everything. And, and you know, they've got, you got a, you know, some bit of incest in there going on. And it's, it's kind of like, like Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, this one, this one kind of <laughs> takes incest so at a whole a whole new level but it, it does, sounds like the tommy knockers <laughs> yeah but it, the quite interesting thing about it is is that it's the tagline which you know that the rich suck off the poor and it's and it kind of runs with this but it does work like a mystery so is this boy going mad or is there something really going on right because he because he finds out that he's adopted and you know and it's this you know it's this 19th it's his 18th birthday, and there's a reason why they adopted him. So, why is it 16 and 18? Those are always like the hallmark birthdays for whatever satanic purposes. But it does have Billy Warlock, probably best known for Baywatch. So, um, but oh, it, Lord. <laughs> well, you know, he's a nice looking kid in that. But well, yeah, he's quite easy on the eyes. They they did want him to do a um, society too called Body Modification that was in development but never really got made. But society is really good. Now that's also part of the Billy Bob Briggs's um, drive-in show on Shutter, but you can also watch it on its own as well. But I suggest watching well, it on Bob well. because it, you get a lot of interesting backstories and stuff like this on the making of it. So. Well, definitely. Amazon is here to make your life easier. By just the tap of a button, you can turn the camera on your phone to your own personal shopping list. Introducing Flow. Just tap the camera icon under the search bar and you can find whatever it is you're looking for right on Amazon. Faster than scanning a barcode and typing the name of your item into the search engine. Besides, searching with words is so 2012. Save time and money. Amazon, where shopping meets effortless. For Bill Whitney. I've never been paranoid. Fear plays a large part in family life. I feel like something's gonna happen. And if I scratch the surface, there'll be something terrible underneath. He's afraid his sister. Could you zip me up, Billy? Is not what she seems. God, Bill, what's the matter with you? He thinks his friends are out to get him. Make waves with me, you're gonna drown. People are what they are. Now you have to learn to accept that. He's about to find out the truth. <laughs> why, why are you guys doing this to me, huh? Boy, you've been living with these people all your life and you didn't know anything about this? Is far worse than he could ever imagine. If you don't follow the rules, Billy, bad things happen. Didn't you know the Billy boy? The rich of old sucked off low class scum like you. Uh oh, Billy. Clarissa? Don't be so intense. Now, some people make the rules and some people follow the rules. It's a question of what you're born to. You never were one of us. You know, you really deserve what's going to happen to you. I, I don't think so. We can't you see they're setting you up for something? You know how I hate to give you drugs. You're officially dead. Don't go home, Billy. No, 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 no! Bill Whitney is about to become one... Showtime, Billy! ...with society. <laughs> Who are you? Let me give you a hand, Bill. <laughs> 
in Beverly Hills, what you fear is only the beginning. Anything for society. <laughs> And what's your third one? My third one was a series. It was from the uh, All Souls trilogy. It's called The Discovery of Witches. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's on um, AMC now as well. It's a 2011 historical fantasy novel. And uh, it was written by American scholar uh, Deborah Harkness. It follows the story of Diana Bishop. She's a history of science professor at Yale University. And after accidentally finding an elusive, long-thought manuscript, is compelled to embrace the magic in her blood that she has sought to keep out of her life and engage in the forbidden romance with the charming vampire Matthew Claremont. You know, I, I saw this, and I was looking at it for like a month. It's like, okay, do I want to devote like, you know, eight episodes of the first season? Mm -hmm. And I think it was really well done. I've not read the book. Um, I really was upset when it got to, you know, the, the eighth one it's like okay the eighth installment and now i can't watch anymore and it's, it's all about that forbidden love sort of like twilight but it's better because this girl smiles and has emotion <laughs> but, she's, <laughs> but she's a witch and you know she's coming into her own and this vampire falls in love with her and you know it's the typical boy meets girl you know boy and girl tried to fight you know horrible circumstances i mean it, it's it's um uh, it, the book received a lot of positive feedback from a lot of literary critics. I'm probably going to try to read it. It was compared with other uh, other fantasy novels like Twilight and Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. And the novel was began. It was a thought experiment for Harkness. She previously only published works of historical nonfiction, and drew her academic background as a historian in her studies of alchemy, magic, and the occult. And you could tell that this woman is an historian, as even just through the movie, because it has a lot of information and depth to people who are interested in witchcraft and, and alchemy and any occult. It's kind of like up your alley. And I won't give it away because the, the, you're going to be pissed by the time you get to the eighth part of it. But I'm really looking forward to the second installment of it. I didn't think I was going to like it, but I, I watched the whole thing in a day and a half. So okay. I normally don't do that, but it's really worth it. Well, I actually saw this. Um, this actually, before it went to Shudder, it was on Sky One here in the UK and it premiered right. in, um, in September. And I did, um, I kind of waited till it was all out there and then I watched it. And I actually really liked it because I have to sit there and say, it has an amazing acting class. And the, we're yes, talking about does. all these actors who won tons of awards. So they didn't go cheap on the acting side of it. No, Lindsay, they didn't. Lindsay Duncan's in it. She's bloody fantastic. I've seen her on stage in multiple productions here. Matthew Good goods in it as the vampire um we're gonna be covering one of his movies next season in stoker he's in that right um but he, he's a really that. good actor as well um but yeah that's what they say it has a really amazing cast as well which you well, know they keep you interested kind of it it does keep you interested you know like i always talk about you want you like the characters you want to see what happens to the characters if you don't like the characters then mm. it's just a done deal you don't want to watch it but, you know, these people actually make you care about the characters. And I think that's what important. It's important for, you know, series, especially of this caliber. But, I mean, the book looks like it's amazing. I'm probably going to have to download it on Kindle and read it because... Well, that's what, it, that's what I plan on doing as well. I started, so I started watching series like, ooh, I really want to read that book. So it's like... Right. But, I'm I mean, it's got it. such great reviews. I mean, no one has said one bad thing about it, mm. except maybe the Catholic Church. <laughs> <laughs> If the Catholic Church doesn't like it, we love it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> hey, what about you? Morning face. You get is when you don't sleep well. This is what happened to Linda. Morning, guys. Good morning. Ah, what is that thing? It's me, Linda. Oh, my God, it talks. Run! No, it's me, Linda, from HR. It looks hungry. Save the children. Save them. What? Stay back. I've got mace. Ow, that went in my eyes. We're it's called beauty sleep for a reason. And there's never been a better time to get some. Get 20% off IKEA salt and mattresses. IKEA, love your home. Once the world was full of wonders. But it belongs to humans now. We have all but disappeared. Demons, vampires and witches... Hiding in plain sight. Professor Claremont, you're a vampire. You're a witch. To determine what's happening to 
of us, we have to understand our beginnings. The book. I've been looking for it for over a century. If we witches had the book of spells, it could change everything. You need to be careful. Is that a threat? No. It's a warning. It's not about the book, is it? It's about her. Covenant forbids interspecies relationships. Are you seriously considering endangering our family? For which? If you do, it will be war. I don't get to choose who I love. If we were allowed to come together, there'd be fewer problems. Can't you see the danger you're in? Astonishingly powerful. I'm not in control of it. If he breaks the rules, he pays the price. Give her to them. We are bound together. My last film is a 2012 American supernatural horror film which was written, produced, and directed by Rob Zombie. It's called Lords of Salem. Yes, it's, I love Lords of Salem. Now, it's, it's one of these films that, for you me- You have to watch. Well, when I first saw it, I didn't like it, but I watched it I again. I didn't like it the first time either. I had to watch it the second time to really get into it. And I enjoyed it, but it has an amazing cast. It's got, you know, Sherry Moon Zombie in it, of course. Because- of course. But has Bruce Davison, Judy Geeson, um, Pat, Patricia Quinn from Rocky Horror, Dee Wallace, Maria Conchita Alonso, Andrew Prine, and Meg Foster. Meg Foster was really big in the eighties. He tends to be using her a lot lately because he's. Once he, I guess he replaced Karen Black with her. And Ken right. Foray's in it. If you're you know a fan of Dawn of the Dead, and it does have an amazing cast. But it does deal with. Um, the plot focuses on a troubled female disc jockey in Salem, Massachusetts, whose life becomes entangled with a coven of ancient Satan-worshipping women. Because she plays that album. I actually, mm-hmm. after a while, kind of got grooved into that song. <laughs> yeah. like, I need the mix for that. <laughs> I think I have it on my Spotify playlist. You probably do. <laughs> <laughs> I think I did. I think, oh, I like the soundtrack of this movie. <laughs> and, you know... The, I got the only weak link in it's probably Sherry Moon Zombie, but she does an adequate job. She you know? does. She's not totally horrible. No. She didn't really have to do much except wear short shorts and her long. Yeah. I think, I mean, locks. you know, I She's think. She's a pretty girl. I think the film probably would have got more notice if they had like a caliber actress in the main part. But just um, a little bit. But saying that, you know, she does, she does do a good job and. She's very She easy. wasn't totally horrible. She's, no, she's, she's easy on the eyes and she's very pretty. Very easy on the eye. And she does a good job. I think I think the problem, you know, the only problem I had is I think that when you put her against all these iconic actors and actresses, you know, screen uh, queens. And well, yeah, and it's some, you know, it's kind of and you and you find you should be more interested in her, but I found myself more interested in the witches. Sort of well, thing. the witches were total twat weasels. But you had to love them. Yeah. <laughs> they were just wretched women. Oh, my God. And but when you find out who they are, you're D. like, Wallace. oh, my God. I can't believe that's such and such. I can't believe that's such and such. So. Well, Dee Wallace was fantastic. She I love her. fantastic. You know, she's one of those actresses that, you know, okay, of course she did E.T. Exactly. And, you know, became the perfect mom. But, you know, she's always gone back to her horror roots. She's, like the you know, howling and all that. Oh, yeah. And she's, st- you know, you know, the hills have eyes. and Exactly. You know, and, and, she's, and she keeps returning there because she knows where she's loved. That's where she needs to be because she's excellent at it. She's just that, she's a genre queen when it comes to horror. She just is. Oh, when you see Dee Wallace, even if I don't think I'm going to like the movie, it says Dee Wallace, I will automatically watch it <laughs> just because it says Dee Wallace. Well, I mean, if you want to see a good film with Dee Wallace, 
solace in it. Watch The Frighteners. It's a Peter Jackson film, you know, the Lord of the Rings director. He right. made this horror film with Michael J. Fox and Trini Alvarado and we and Dee Wallace. And Dee Wallace is in this film. And she's I have not seen that one. The Frighteners. It's really good. It's one of my favorites. Uh, ah! Are you the new tenant? I just saw the tenant like 10 minutes ago standing in the doorway. Oh, I hate to break it to you, but there is no person in number five. You have to understand that there is a war waging in heaven. souls of the Salem women, which the devil's child would inherit the earth. Satan, Satan come, come to us. us! God does not spare angels when they sin. Well, yeah, Lords of Salem, I highly recommend. That's on Shudder, of course, um, for April and through May. And I believe it's on for the next three or four months. There's also, um, if you are a Rob Zombie fan, The Devil's Rejects is now on there. And The House of a Thousand Corpses is on there. Which... And The Green Inferno is on Amazon Prime, which I watched twice this week. I'm still disappointed that there wasn't more cannibalism, but I'll get over it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I think once you get in the Hollywood system, you kind of have to cut back a little bit so it's probably no like you can't cut back there has to be a, that I, that movie was not not that claustrophobic but it was just so disgustingly gross and you just you just really wanted this girl to get away in the end i mean there's nothing worse than going on a ecological adventure to save the rainforest and the people the inhabitants start eating you mm -hmm. so you know, it's like come on you know that, that'd be something that would happen to me well, I thought that's what made the film work for me. It's like, oh my God, look at all these Greenpeace hippie people. Oh, they're <laughs> fantastic. Let's go over there and help these people. And then get like, let's see how these earth first motherfuckers die. <laughs> yeah. Every time I see a tree hugger, it's like, oh, I hope you get to the <laughs> cannibal village. <laughs> We're going to hate the email now. Thanks, Keith. <laughs> but, um, Keith Shago at LL Podcast. <laughs> Keith, Keith Shago at LL Podcast .com. <laughs> All your hate mail to me. I love it. <laughs> um, but, um, oh, interesting on um, point, though. Um, I, I do suggest that if you do have Shudder, that you do watch the, the Rob Zombie films, House of a Thousand Corpses, and Devil's Reject. Yes. Because the, the third installment is coming out this summer from Rob Excellent. Zombie for that for that. Trilogy. I don't know if it's gonna be a trilogy. Oh, who knows? Is this, I think it, they're trying to. It's looking well. Like if this, if the third movie makes a lot of money, it might end up become a quadrilogy. Who knows? So, but at the moment, it will. Well, be we'll see what trilogy. happens. I mean, I mean, you either like it or you don't. But I just love Rob Zombie. So, yeah, I like Rob Zombie. I don't mind him. I do think that I liked his Halloween. I thought that was interesting. I think his Halloween. It was too, interesting. Halloween two was a bit boring. Unfortunately, I think I thought so too. I think, I think just. Was, he just needed to like, cut out the dream sequences. I know. And it was like beating a dead horse a little bit. I mean. Well, it's like you, you killed your wife off in the first one. She, keep her dead. I don't yeah. bring her back. There's, there's no reason why she needs to be in a dream sequence on a white horse. It just doesn't make sense. Exactly. Exactly. Well, 31. Well, it's kind of like we've seen it before. So there was nothing new there. But right. what, I do, what I do like about the Rob Zombie horror films is that he does have a habit of bringing back the old 70s and 80s classic 
Um, Which I do like. Yeah. I mean, that you just can't beat that back then. I know a lot of younger people now probably would not like or appreciate it, but I really highly suggest it to our younger listeners because some of the stuff is just cool shit. It just is. Well, even when Karen Black shows up in the House of a Thousand Corpses, you're like, oh my right. God, it's Karen Black. And you can't mistake Karen Black because of the black eyeliner. Which, right. in July, we'll be covering two Karen Black films called Burnt Offerings and Trilogy of Terror, part of our dang I know, I love Trilogy of Terror. You know that movie used to give me nightmares? Every time I think of Trilogy of Terror, I think that little thing, and he's okay. running, and he's going... <laughs> <laughs> Just running through the house that just fucked me up when i was 12 years old <laughs> wow i used to, i i used to wait till my sisters were asleep and i'd be on their bed going <laughs> the shit out or of kelly me. ritter <laughs> yeah i pop pop out with my little um butcher my little um kitchen knife <laughs> that movie scared the shit out of me when i was a kid well that was remarkable for his time so right yeah, that was a tv movie so I know. Well, but for then it was scary. It was Monster Movie Matinee the first time I seen it. I can't say enough about Monster Movie Matinee because somebody needs to bring that shit back. I that know. and Thriller or uh, Killer. Was it Thriller Theater? Yeah, Thriller. Thriller. Killer. No, it's Chiller. I'm sorry. Chiller. Chiller Theater. Chiller with a hand coming up out of the pond scum and going back down. I was just like, God, I miss that stuff. Well, in Syracuse, we also had, they used to, because we had Monster Movie Matinee, which was on the NBC or Channel 3 out of Syracuse. And right. that was on Saturdays. And I think Channel 5, which is CBS affiliated, decided that they could cut, do this on a Sunday. And they came out with, evil. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> which I thought, oh my God, what a scary word, evil. And yeah. then you realize it was movie spelled backwards. But, right. <laughs> but you, saw, like, cool, cool. you saw some freaky shit on there. I think I saw like children shouldn't play with dead things on there. Oh my God. <laughs> nobody has seen that movie except me oh my god we have to just do that revisit that movie because nobody knows about that you're what, the first person in 30 years that has mentioned that movie to me oh my I god have it on dvd oh my god i'm gonna have to rent it now just because i forgot about it it's really it was just like it was it was the was it the, the motorcycle kids and they were playing with the book and yeah and, and, then, and, they're, and they're digging up they're digging up um dead people to party with right <laughs> yes <laughs> they come alive <laughs> but you know who directed that don't you it was um what was his name bob campbell maybe i might have this wrong I forget. Sorry. but the same guy who directed that directed um black christmas and porky oh my god he directed porky's as well oh there you go that that i jenner that's definitely that that director but black because christmas porky i mean that's a classic so yes it is but i forgot about children should play with dead things that movie scared the fuck out of me because the zombies were Back then, they, the dead people were realistic, as what I thought. It gave me nightmares. Another well, reason my mother didn't want me to watch things like that, or Dark Shadows, for that matter. <laughs> but e -bomb was on, like, at 12 <laughs> noon on a Sunday. I know. I remember as I was watching my mom, I was going, what are you watching this shit for? <laughs> and there's, like, a house like House of the Seven, House of the seven, corpses, seven corpses. And it's like, this, you know, people, these people going to this house. I was to like film a movie and then they're all dying like the way the people died in the house. That was right. Really, some really good stuff on the Evom. It was. I forgot it was more all the, about Evom. More of the 50s, 60s kind of stuff. And Evom was kind of like the early 70s, all that 70s horror film. So, yeah. I, got, I have to say this once before we, we leave because I watched part of it last night and I couldn't believe I did it, but I couldn't stop laughing. Remember the brain? Oh, yeah. The big brain floating around and it was killing people. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's on it's on amazon and i mean i just can't help watching <laughs> what about the creeping eye that used to scare the hell out of me you know the eye with oh the, the God, tentacles coming up the mountainside <laughs> that used to freak the hell out of me I think oh I my god yes that did scare me do you remember I a movie called the creeping flesh oh yeah <laughs> and what about the skull where it's like you know, i think it had like peter cushing in it and i don't know so i can't remember the really the whole thing about the story but i just remember the skull being superimposed chasing people down the hallways yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but actually got... there's this one film that was on monster movie matinee when i was younger and i didn't know the name of it and i've been looking for it i, I finally found the name of it and i was actually gonna buy it and i thought maybe not because it's got really bad reviews but it scared the hell out of me about these people in this house and this weeping willow tree would like wrap them up and like suck their bloods out and ever since then i used to have this fear of weeping willow trees 
<laughs> but then I was like, read. It's called the Creeping Terror. I guess that's the name of it. And I, I got a why I'm not. Apparently, I'm not it's this Mexican film that's been dubbed in English. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, it's like you know, never. It's like one of these films that you should never see because it's really bad. But it scared the hell out of me when I was a kid. Everything was different when we were like nine or ten years old, for sure. Yeah. But my mother let me watch it, and that's where I don't understand. She let me watch all that crap, but if I turned Dark Shadows on, I was not allowed to watch it. It's like, come on. Well, my mom let me watch all that crap, and my grand. I mean, I used to go to my grandmother's house and watch. You know, because I used to spend weekends there and, and we, she would watch the horror movies with me. And then, you know, when I killed all those people and they let me out of the mental hospital, they didn't understand why that happened. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not. He does work in a mental hospital. It's not a lie. <laughs> no, work, no work that I live there. <laughs> but no, in all seriousness, though, but I mean, I came out quite well rounded considering because they're doing that. Considering. Considering. You, you know. can put two sentences together. That's good. I, I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't trade my childhood for anything. I'm glad I grew up in those times. Me neither. And sell all those classic things. Well, I, I wouldn't change it. I, I mean, being a child, really a, a youngster of the 70s, I wouldn't change that for shit. Hmm. I think it can, I think well around us. I mean, we have like a history of 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, all the way up to today. All Before different the, kind the, of the, the genres and horror films and everything like that. Before and, the high tech shit kicked in. Yeah, and it's probably one of the reasons why we're doing this podcast is because we do have a love for it. It started when we were kids, so. Exactly. So, Which works for me works every weekend. For me too. So before we go off, what we like to let you know is next month we'll be covering The Other, uh, the 1972 film directed by Robert Mulligan, and the book directed by um, once he was an actor, but then he turned into an author named Tom Tyrison called The Other. It's an interesting book, and it's going to start our Siblings Month, which is going to be quite interesting, and you'll see a similar theme once you get into the episodes. And I'm sure you're going to hear a lot of insults, Kelly Ritter from Watertown, New York. <laughs> yeah. Poor our, Kelly. Our siblings are what made us what we are today. Exactly. All the, and all the bad. So if you want to follow us on our podcast, you can follow us on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, and that's LL Podcast. Or you can go to our website at www.llpodcast.com and sign up to our newsletter. If you sign up to our newsletter, you get exciting information that's coming up, and we've got some fantastic news coming your way in July. Exactly. give you too much, but let's sit there and say that Vicki and I are working our asses off. We're going to give you something special that's never been done in podcasting history. And... From me, that's make sure you do watch Shudder. That's www.shudder.com and enjoy all they have to offer. It's a good price, very good deal, $5.99 a month. And all the horror films that you'll see, some popular ones that you have heard of and plenty of ones you haven't heard of that you should have heard, heard of. And let's see anything else. I think that's pretty much it. So yes, next it is, month, dear. the others. Um, there's the Shudder, April 2019. And it's saying goodbye from Vicky. Say goodbye, Vicky. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great week. And goodbye from me, and we'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.